section of my blog online at ESPN760.com, the video blog right here at ESPN760.com. Each week we'll take you into the world of sports. I'll give you some crazy thoughts. Maybe we'll even have some guests. Maybe Jmart will join me at some point. So, first up, LeBron James to the Miami Heat. Oh, yes, they did. Riley Wade. You know, it's amazing to think how they got this done. Riley, the master manipulator, putting Wade in that spot to go out there and try to get these guys, LeBron James, Chris Bosh, this is unbelievable. It almost feels like, you know, people here in South Florida love the Miami Heat, but there are so many more Heat fans now. Those transplanted New Yorkers like myself who are sitting there saying, I can't root for the Knicks anymore, all of a sudden, are going to root for these guys, the Miami Heat. There's no question about that. Riley deserves a ton of credit. Wade deserves so much credit because think about it. He took less money. They're getting 110. He's getting 107. He could have gotten more than any of them. And I was there last Friday night at that celebration, which felt like a concert, a fashion show, a party, and a club all wrapped into one. It was unbelievable. But a couple of things to keep an eye on this week. I really hope they figure out a way of bringing Udonis Haslam back. I think he's been the heart and soul of that team. Even if it means you've got to sacrifice the tremendous hair that is Mike Miller. It means that if you have to go lower than Miller and bring a Jason Capono back here just to get Udonis Haslam, I think they should do that. There's no way that Derek Fisher is coming here. By the time I sit with you here at ESPN760.com for my next video blog, I'm telling you Derek Fisher will be a member of the Los Angeles Lakers. There's no tampering involved here. This is a chance to be one of the great teams in NBA history. And I truly believe, as much as I love Kobe, and I think Kobe's the best player in the league, if Udonis Haslam is back on this team this year, as Drake says, I think they're going to win the championship. I think he is such a big key. He's the one guy that can get in LeBron's face if he needs to. He can get in Bosch's face, Wade's face. You know, he's the one guy from the Heat teams that's still close with both Wade and Shaq. Not saying that those guys are rivals, but I don't think they're talking all the time. But this has been as fun as anything else in recent memory down here. You know, really since Shaq got here, this has been the most fun that I've had covering a team, talking about a team in a long time, and I'm really excited. Even though I haven't been a huge LeBron fan for a long period of time, I'm fascinated to see how this is going to work here with the Miami Heat. What a fascinating first half of the Major League Baseball season. It's all-star week. It's always one of the slower weeks in sports, but baseball has so many storylines right now. It's definitely been the year of the pitcher. When you think about all of the perfect games and the no-hitters, and a guy like Ubaldo Jimenez and Josh Johnson right here in South Florida, there are so many great pitchers this year. And you think about one interesting stat. Jose Bautista leads the Major Leagues in home runs with 24 for the Blue Jays. you probably never heard of him. I didn't know I know who he was before this year. The least amount of home runs to lead the league, lead all of the, the big leagues by the All-Star break since 93. If that doesn't tell you that steroids are down, I don't know what will. A couple of things. First off with the Marlins, obviously not a very good team. They're 10 games back in the division. You've got to keep an eye on this in the second half. You've got to keep an eye on Cantu, Ugla, Cody Ross, and Ricky Nolasco, and the possibility of those guys getting traded. There's a distinct possibility there. Let's stay in the NL East. Let's talk about these guys, the New York Mets. They had a tremendous first half. David Wright, arguably an MVP. Santana came on late. What Pelfrey has done is tremendous. Getting contributions from R.A. Dickey and Takahashi have been absolutely tremendous. You've got to keep Reyes healthy in the second half. You've got to see if the combination of Descends, Parnell, and Feliciano can be an eighth-inning idea there for the Mets. And let's see what happens with Carlos Beltran here. They're going to put him right in the lineup in center field. They're going to move Pagan and Frank Cora to a platoon and right. I don't love that. I love Frank Cora. I don't think you take him out of the lineup. But Ike Davis, oh, what a storyline he's been. Totally changed the mess. But when push comes to shove, if you said to me right now as we sit here at All-Star break, give me a team that's going to go to the World Series as much as it pains me to do it. I'm still going to go with the Phillies. Just because you got Halliday and Hamill's front end in that rotation, they're going to get healthier in the second half. They've had unbelievable performances from some of their fill-in guys. Cody Ransom all of a sudden hitting home runs for them. So I'll still take the Phillies. Over to the AL. Yankees are the best record in baseball, no surprise there. They have three pitchers, Sebastia, Pettit, and Hughes, each with 11-plus wins. It's going to be very interesting to see what they do with Hughes. Do they go out there and get another starting pitcher? And to keep Hughes' innings down, do they move him to the bullpen for at least a little bit? They need help there. Job has been terrible this year. Mariano has been great. What do you expect? They need a Seves back. But you've got to love what you've seen from Sabathia, 
Pettit, and Hughes. And I'm okay if I'm a Yankee fan with Vasquez and Burnett. I don't think they've been as bad as other people think. In terms of their everyday lineup, it's funny. You think about the fact that people said A-Rod and Teixeira have had down years. Between them combined, I think they've got 130 or so RBI. I think they're okay. And production out of Gardner and Swisher has been tremendous. Jeter is what he is. You know that. He's as, as consistent as can be. Red Sox, the most injured, banged-up team in all of baseball in the first half. Beckett. Buckholz. I mean, the list goes on and on. Veritek and Martinez, Pedroia, Ellsbury, Hermita, if you want to throw them in there. Cameron was banged up. They've had a tremendous amount of injuries. I don't see the Red Sox as a team that's going to go far in the playoffs if they even make the playoffs at all. So right now I go with the pick that I started the season with, Yankees-Phillies, despite the fact Phillies in third place in the NL East behind the Braves and the Mets. But if you're going to go for a theme in the first half of Major League Baseball, not the managerial firings with Freddie Gonzalez and others, not any one specific player like Miguel Cabrera, Robinson Cano with triple crown type numbers. It's absolutely the year of the pitcher, the first half so far in Major League Baseball. Alright, we gotta finish out my first video blog on ESPN72C.com with some entourage, right? So there I am. Last night's episode oh no, sorry. Uh, last night's episode of Entourage was interesting. In a shocking development, nothing actually happened. Because nothing's ever happened in Entourage, but it's still the greatest show on TV. It's an interesting season. The power that Ari's getting is amazing. You had the sports theme last night with Jerry Jones involved. You like that. I think that Vince's role right now, I don't exactly get it with the Scott Kahn connection and he's going to try to be this daredevil. I don't know what he's trying to prove. Turtle, well, let's see what happens with that girl. Looks like J-Lo. I think there's some interesting storylines going on there with the whole Tiffany scenario. You know, E and drama working together. It's going to be very interesting to see where this season goes. I, I would assume there's got to be some sort of injury or something bad, God forbid, that happens. God forbid, it's a fake TV show. That happens to Vince. Why would they have him doing all this daredevil stuff? You know, maybe there's a wedge between Vince and the rest of the guys because of the fact that he's working with Scott Kahn's character and, you know, Ari's too big time now. But, of course, nothing happens. Nothing ever happens in Entourage, but I will watch every week, 1030, on HBO. All right, that's going to do it for us here. ESPN760.com. You can check out my video blog every single week. That's it. It's over. <laughs>